Hi students, this is Kartik Trivedi and you are watching a lecture series of Applied Thermodynamics with me. So, so far in last videos we have seen uh, what is the refrigerant, what are the classification of refrigerant and in that video we have seen the classification of primary refrigerant and now we will move on to the very important topic which is desirable properties of ideal refrigerant or you can say desirable characteristic of ideal refrigerant so this is very important topic from exam point of view so let's start today's video but before we begin today's video let's quickly recap what we have done in last few episodes so just see the screen what we have done just see the screen so that you will get some idea okay we have seen so far we have seen these kind of things you can see on your screen and now in today's topic we are going to start that desirable properties of refrigerants but before we start desirable properties of refrigerant you should know what is refrigerant that we have already covered in last episode refrigerant is a substance which absorbs the heat at evaporator and reject the heat at a condenser so the sub substance which is moving in the cycle which is your refrigerant and with the help of uh, refrigerant you are creating a refrigerating heat so i already told you that refrigerant is a james bond of our movie so this is very important topic now listen it very carefully and give your full attention so the question is desirable properties of refrigerant so first we will see thermodynamic properties so first thermodynamic property is critical temperature and pressure now what is critical temperature and pressure so it is that temperature above which vapor cannot condense so what should be there that the critical temperature and pressure of the refrigerant should be higher than the system temperature inside the condenser okay why is it is so if it is not like that then what will happen if it is below critical if the low if it is has the low critical temperature and pressure so what will happen the vapor cannot be condensed so critical temperature is that temperature above which vapor cannot be condensed so what should it should be like so it should be like it should have a high critical temperature and pressure so so that uh, whatever the vapor comes in the condenser it will be a condensed so it should have a high temperature and pressure compared to what compared to the condenser temperature or the condenser system temperature okay so this is the important topic now second is boiling temperature so it should have a low boiling temperature okay if it is having a high boiling temperature then what you have to do then you have to create high vacuum and high vacuum in compressor so it will create a more operating cost so we will have more operating cost and it will reduce its capacity so capacity is also reduced so it should have a low boiling temperature third freezing temperature it should have a low freezing temperature why because it should have a low freezing temperature compared to what compared compared to the temperature that we required in the evaporator otherwise what will happen if it is not like that then the refrigerant will freeze and system will be choke up so that's why your uh, freezing temperature of refrigerant should be lower how much compared to your system evaporator temperature okay so that is the requirement so it should have a low freezing temperature then we have evaporator and condenser pressure so in the evaporator it should have a pressure nearly equal to atmospheric pressure okay so it should have a, we cannot say it should have a high pressure or low pressure it should have a positive pressure so what will if there will be a low pressure then what will happen then the outside particles will be entered into the system so that is also one difficulty over there okay and high pressure will require the car, more cost a material which has having a good strength it requires a material which requires a good strength so that's why it, we are not talking that it should have a low it should have we will uh, use the word it should have positive pressure so that our cycle will work satisfactorily okay next is latent heat of vaporization so it should have a high latent heat of vaporization more high latent heat of vaporizer refrigerant have the more heat it can absorb so it will create more refrigerating effect so that's why a refrigerant should have a high latent heat of vaporization specific volume it should have a low specific volume why because we are employing the reciprocating compressor so it is good that it should have a low specific volume okay 
so now these are the all thermodynamic properties now we will move on to the chemical properties so chemical properties first is flammability it should be non flammable it should not be such like that it will create explosion inside the system so it should be a non flammable this is the important chemical property of refrigerant second toxic it should be non toxic why it should be non toxic if it is toxic if will mix with the air and create a toxic effect so that what will happen it will have a bad effect on the human as well as on the product so that's why it is very important that it should be a non toxic third miscibility with oil what is miscibility with miscibility means it's the property of refrigerants or you can say that it is property of the refrigerant to mix well with the oil so what will ha happen if it will mix well with the oil that that oil if oil mix well with the refrigerant then what will happen then it will easily carry lubricating oil with it whenever it's go going wherever it is going and second if if it does not have a good miscibility then what will happen then lubricant uh, will not uh, easily mix with the refrigerant and then what will happen then lubricating oil will create the coating in the in the uh, evaporator tube and that will be not good from the heat transfer uh, heat transfer point of view so that is why it's, it is uh, desirable that it should mix well with the oil second solubility of water so as far as the refrigerant uh, characteristic uh, consider it should have a low solubility of, of water why it should have low solubility of water if refrigerant mix easily with the water then what will happen it will choke up because that water which is mixed with the refrigerant it will created it will be converted into the ice and what will happen it will choke up the whole system it will choke up the capillary tube it will choke up the expansion wall so that's why it is very necessary it should have a low solubility of water last effect on store product so it should not have any effect on store product let's say now uh, the refrigerant uh, if uh, that's where we are having a uh, some store product over there in the refrigerated space and if it will create any effect in terms of the taste in terms of the quality of the product so it does not have any kind of adverse effect on the store product so it is very necessary and now we will move on to the physical properties so this is the very important properties stability here stability what does it mean it should be stable refrigerant should be stable it should not react with the metal it should not create any kind of compound while mixing with the other or while reacting with the other so it should be stable refrigerant should be stable so that it will uh, perform its duty very satisfactorily okay so it should be stable it should give us the desired output it should sustains during the operation so that is what the stability means second viscosity it should have a low viscosity okay so that is good because low viscosity is required as far as the heat transfer uh, point of view is considered so low viscosity is a desirable thing over here third thermal conductivity so it should have a high thermal conductivity because we will require good heat transfer so that's why it should have a good thermal conductivity corrosiveness corrosiveness it should be non corrosive okay it should not create any kind of corrosion effect on the metal or any other part so from that point of view it should be non corrosive then dielectric so now this is the very important property so now what will happen when the refrigerant liquid refrigerant passes through the evaporator and it will be converted into the vapor now when this vapor refrigerant passing through the compressors so what will happen there is a winding near the motor so what will happen when that vapor it passes through the motor winding if it does not have a good uh, dielectric strength then what will happen it will create the short circuit so that's why good high dielectric strength means it will not create any kind of short circuit in the system while it when it is passing over the winding when the vapor refrigerant passing over the winding it should have a good dielectric strength if it does not have the high dielectric strength then it will create a short circuit effect over there so it should have a high dielectric strength then we have a leakage tendency leakage tendency means if if by any chance if the refrigerant will be leak then it should be detected detectable easily detectable and it should be easily detectable by the other or by some any other means so it should be easily detectable
So that is the criteria. Then it will be the performance. Performance means the see, refrigerant should be high performance. Why? Why it should be high performance? It should have a high COP. Okay. So because we know that the refrigerant efficiency measures in terms of COP, coefficient of performance. So it should have a high coefficient of performance. It should have a high COP. Then it is cost. So we know that cost, running cost, or you can say operating cost should be low. So these are the physical properties. So what we have seen so far, we have seen of thermodynamic properties, we have seen chemical properties, and we have seen physical properties. If in exam, we will ask the question something like that, write down the desirable properties of ideal refrigerant, then you have to first write thermodynamic property, then you have to write chemical property, and then you have to write physical property. So you have to explain all the point one by one. And if in the exam, if they will ask something like that, write desirable characteristic of refrigerant, then you have to write down just one liner. Then you know you have to separate thermodynamic property, physical property, chemical property. If you will ask desirable characteristic of refrigerant, then you have to just write down the one liner. Like look, it should have low boiling point, it should have high critical temperature, it should have high latent heat of vaporization. As you can see, all the point on the on the screen that we have already discussed. But when he is asked about the desirable characteristic, then you have to write just the one liner okay so this is very important so when it's a desirable properties of refrigerant in the exam then you write physical chemical and thermodynamic but when it says a desirable characteristic of refrigerant then you have to write the one liner which is already explained so you can see on your screen that that's kind of one liner you have to write in your exam okay so it should be something like it should have a low specific heat of liquids it should have a low specific volume of vapor non corrosive non flammable non toxic it should be low cost it should have a low cost it is easy to liquid it is easy to locating leaks should mix with the well with the oil so this kind of one liner you have to write now we will see one sort topic which is ODP and GWP of refrigerant now first we will see what is GWP GWP means global warming potential global warming potential so what is global warming potential it is a measure of the relative global warming effect of different gases it assigns a value to the amount of heat trapped by a certain mass of gas relative to the amount of heat trapped by a similar mass of carbon dioxide over a specific heat period of time. So what you will be here, here will be a ratio whatever the heat trapped by the refrigerant comparison to what with compared to the same if you have same amount of CO2 with with you. So it is having comparison with respect to CO2. So what does it mean high GWP? The higher the GWP value more that particular gas warms the earth compared to carbon dioxide. So it is, it is desirable that it should have a low GWP because if it is having a high GWP then it will create a high, it will create a more worst effect on the environment. So, so that is why it is desirable that it should have a low GWP and the GWP it is a ratio which compared to what which compared to CO2 because here it is, it is written that you can see on the screen it assign a value to the amount of heat trapped by a certain mass of gas in place of gas you can read right refrigerant amount of heat trapped by a certain mass of refrigerant related to the amount of heat trapped by a similar mass of carbon dioxide with reference to CO2 next is ODP ODP means ozone dependent depletion potential ozone depletion potential the odp is the ratio of the impact on ozone of a chemical of a chemical or you can say of a refrigerant compared with the effect of simpler mass of cfc 11 or you can say r11 so let's say you have a certain refrigerant so it is a odp means what odp is a ratio of that refrigerant is having impact on ozone layer compared to if the same mass of R11 will be taken then what will be its effect on the ozone layer so it is having a ratio compared to what compared to R11 refrigerant so from here we can conclude that it should have a low ODP okay if it is having a high ODP then what will happen it will create more ozone depletion so that is why it should have a low ODP so from here we can conclude that it should have a low GWP as well as low ODP. Now, right now in some market, there are some refrigerant which is having a low ODP but high GWP. So that refrigerant is also going to be a phase out in a near future or the older refrigerant is already going to be a taken place in place of that refrigerant. So I hope you will like this video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.